Welcome in this uh, new episode that I have uh, edited in uh, St. Lucia after we crossed the Atlantic. Uh, today we will uh, take you from uh, Lisbon uh, to the beautiful island of Madeira where we spent uh, the New Year's Eve of uh, 2020. And we will uh, talk about uh, homeschooling for the kids. Hope you enjoy! Listen. This is not what we wanted, but uh, we had to leave uh, Lisbon at night. And we started our journey towards Madeira, about uh, five days of uh, crossing. Uh, we had the opportunity, uh, given the conditions, to use our uh, beautiful 200 square meter spinnaker. As usual, Clemence enjoyed uh, jumping on the trampoline. It seems that every kid on Cameron just do that. Uh, why wouldn't they, right? We'll get back in the slow uh, rhythm of uh, passages. Of course, you always keep busy, or always, always things to do. But sometimes, uh, yeah, you can read, you just nap. Everything slows down. And uh, the kids are also uh, getting into that uh, very different rhythm. Clemence can spend uh, about uh, 15 minutes uh, just working that candy. A pretty uneventful uh, sailing and that's good. Uh, we arrived uh, in sight of uh, the island and uh, got the boat ready to go in uh, the marina that we selected. Uh, not easy to anchor over there. Uh, so uh, we went to the marina Quinta do Lorde, which is on the east side of the island. arrived the next day after we made that shot. It was the very end of uh, December, so uh, the weather was beautiful and uh, we got into uh, the capital, uh, Funchal, uh, which is in the center south of the island. We of course ended up in one of the local chandlery with uh, this uh, lovely people uh, which were really really nice. And found a few things as you always need on a boat. Always makes it easier to have kids with you in these situations. The contact is easily. So there were 13 ships large cruise ships who were here guess for what well the show that was about to come in the evening the whole city was getting in the mood in the churches in the streets people were getting uh, all dressed up and it was very beautifully decorated there everything uh, was in uh, celebration mode.
So as we approached uh, the end of uh, the year 2019, we just uh, went around in the city and uh, we were waiting uh, with the kids for uh, midnight because that of that uh, giant uh, firework that is uh, the largest in the world, they say, and so everybody was excited to see it. So we gathered in the harbor, but it turns out that we were not in the best spot and the best thing was probably to be somewhere high up in the, the hills. So, yeah. What we really enjoyed in the next day, we uh, went uh, for a walk uh, in the mountains in the northwest part of the city on a hike that's called uh, the uh, 25 Fountains Hike. We stopped in this place and had coffee, pastries, really nice. Towards the end of the walk, uh, we arrived uh, in uh, one of the largest uh, waterfalls and it was an opportunity to fly the drone a little bit. we did uh, that was just before we left uh, the island actually uh, we visited the uh, east part very like desert like area with some crazy crazy scenery and um, it was uh, right uh, behind the marina where we stayed I get yelled at for flying the drone here by a park ranger So obviously we have uh, to deal with uh, home education while uh, traveling. Our situation is regulated by the French law, so it might be different in uh, every country. Uh, we have to take them once a year so they can be uh, checked by uh, the officials. So it's a little bit tricky because we, uh, we are moving all the time and we are far away from France. but. Uh, we found some uh, very understanding people we explained to them the situation and uh, we will arrange for a check when we go back to uh, France occasionally. We don't follow the official program because there's one that's called uh, the uh, CNED, C -N -E -D. It's, uh, it means the Distant Education Program. Uh, we don't really we don't do that because you have to send back some homework on a very regular basis and that's uh, hard to follow although most of the french kids on boats are uh, doing that uh, what we are doing is trying to take advantage of uh, everyday life and use it as uh, some kind of education and it works pretty well uh, now, as you can see, like uh, today, uh, we decided to do uh, some of a more formal education. So to do that, we have uh, books, official books for uh, Niels level and uh, Clemence. Uh, she just uh, started school. I got lots of books. Yeah, you get lots of books. And yeah, so these are the ones that uh, uh, we are using, but uh, any will do it. It's, it's kind of a... Uh, like a general guideline for us and uh, this way uh, we do uh, math, uh, French, history, geography, science, uh, things like that, uh, that will allow them to be to go back to school if needed in an easy way. We started up home education before leaving uh, on our boat and uh, so we know uh, a little bit how it works and uh, 
we've had uh, two positive feedbacks from uh, the officials so far, so I guess we're not doing such a bad job. And um, there's a quote about this that I, I like. Uh, it says that uh, school doesn't have the monopoly for excellence. And my understanding of this, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the guy who said that, but the, my understanding uh, for uh, that quote is uh, that um, you can do a good job as well, uh, and that's what we're, we're trying to do uh, when you're educating your kids yourself, including on a sailboat like us. Uh, because even though we're not teachers and we're not trained to be teachers, we have only two students. Uh, and we know them pretty well, uh, their strengths and their weaknesses, so we can stop uh, if needed, uh, re-explain things, and I believe that's something that's not so easily done in a regular classroom, uh, where the teacher has obviously 25, 30 kids who knows to, to deal with. Um, so probably those things compensate like our lack of experience and training as teachers and at the same time the fact that we only have two kids to deal with. So the way we do things, uh, mixing some formal education and everyday life uh, type of uh, learning is something that works for us. I'm not saying this is uh, the way to do things. Uh, some people have a very formal home education, some people have a 100% free education We've met both and uh, I believe it's something that you can custom made uh, to your situation. And um, so far I would say that uh, what we have uh, done is working, is working good. So we're going to keep doing it. I guess the best thing is uh, to ask uh, Niels what he thinks about uh, homeschooling. So uh, Niels, what do, you, what do you like the best about uh, homeschooling? Uh, what I like the best is that you can study what you like. Okay. You can choose what you want to do in the day and what you, you want to do the next day. Like, what are your favorite subjects that you like? Um, I like um, science uh, and making models and things like that. History? Yeah. Mm -hmm. at least that too, geography. Writing, not so much? No, not so much. Not so much. Okay, and um, how many hours when we work? Do we, do we work every day? No. No. But, and we can, and since I'm the only student in the class, yeah. well, you can have two or three hours of school and then it's done. Okay, two or three hours. Uh, we don't do it also when we are uh, when the boat is moving too much when we are sailing or when we are uh, going out to visit uh, things right yeah okay and uh, what are the things that you miss from school uh, really what I miss from school is that here you cannot work with friends and have friends okay we, we have friends sometimes on other boats but we are yeah. moving, so... Yeah, uh, not every day. You cannot yeah. go see your friends every week. Yeah. You're, no you're a normal friend that you know. Mm. So hopefully when we are going to move in uh, other islands when where there are more boats than here, maybe we can... Uh, hopefully you will find uh, some uh, other kids who, who you can uh, work with and not only play with, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'll work, we'll swim, we'll clean the boat for the parents. Mm, clean the boat for the parents? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well uh, I'm not, I'm we'll not sure. Try. Uh, 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 th this, this promise is being recorded, so, so uh, I, I might uh, replay that video and, uh, and, and you'll have to do it, right? I didn't say I promised. Huh? Okay. So far we have met uh, one other family that had the same challenges and uh, we offered to organize a common uh, session of education so they came uh, on the boat here. It was uh, very quiet and very concentrated which is not always the case 
but uh, that day uh, uh, the little girl uh, that was uh, from another boat uh, she was uh, uh, very focused on her work and that uh, made it easier for uh, ours to concentrate uh, it's uh, something that uh, I hope we can do again in the future is to bring other kids here and you know share experience uh, between uh, their parents and us and uh, try to get some good uh, original ideas from them that uh, maybe we didn't think about. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, uh, please uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And uh, the next one will be in the middle of our Atlantic crossing and uh, we will suffer a major uh, failure of our uh, traveler for the main set. I found a way to fix it. See you next week.